The National Credit Regulator has warned South Africans to beware of fraudsters who pose as licensed credit providers. I'm joined on the line by the CEO of Paragon Lending Solutions, Gary Palmer, and he's going to talk to us about mitigating those risks. Gary, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Now, we seem to be in tricky territory as, of course, we know that dodgy or, or fraudulent um, credit providers don't look as conspicuous as they do in the movies. They're not wearing big black coats, they don't have slicked back hair, their eyes aren't red. In fact, many people are being duped. Money lending um, you know, is one of the oldest professions in the world, so there are lots of money lenders out there. And I'd like to believe that most of them in the market are reputable and credible, but uh, certainly not everybody. You know? And a lot of people come into this market uh, with limited experience um, and they see you know in certain aspects the high margins that one can achieve uh, in this space um, and they go out there really with a mission to take advantage of vulnerable situations and especially I've come across some property lenders that have more of an attitude of a loan to own you know they'd lend money to somebody in the hope of uh, them defaulting so they can take their assets so unfortunately a lot of borrowers and consumers must uh, be careful you know, who they deal with uh, when they're borrowing money. Now, by this point, we know that all credit providers in South Africa must be licensed. I think the problem is many South Africans are getting duped by credit providers who are unlicensed, but provide fake documentation or assure the consumer that they are, in fact, a licensed credit provider. Are there any telltale signs? How do we know that the people we're trusting to borrow money from are, in fact, licensed? Sure. I mean, firstly, just in terms of regulation and compliance, not everybody needs to be licensed, and I think that's important. So if you're lending directly to a consumer, um, then you would be. You, know, you, you would fall into the National Credit Act, um, you, there's Consumer Protection Act, and there are certain governance procedures that one must follow. But there are a lot of lenders, for example, that lend to companies that, uh, where they fall outside the National Credit Act, but they take other securities. So, not everybody is governed or needs to be governed, even when it comes to FICA, as an example, you know, where the banks are always asking for FICA documentation, you know, not everyone needs to comply with FICA as well if you, if you don't fit in that criteria. So for a consumer, I think the important thing is to, you know, is to really understand who's lending you the money. So, you know, as much time as the lender is spending understanding the borrower, it is important that the borrower understands the lender. So, you know, certain key questions are how long has the lender been around for? Um, and often, where is the lender getting their money? Because many of these non-bank lenders in the market uh, don't have access to capital. So, you know, they go and borrow money from family and friends to start a lending business themselves. And then you know, they, you know they're not for real. Um, well, they certainly don't have deep pockets or access to funding. Um, you need to make sure that whoever you're borrowing the money from has got lots of experience. They have credit committees. I mean, that's a, that's a key area. First telltale sign, you know, if a business is serious, if they've got a formal independent credit committee that assess the transactions. Um, you know, many times, you know, you'll have a one-man band who's using some of their own money who will be the salesperson, the collections person, and the credit person. And that's really not good enough. So in order to be reputable and credible, you need formal credit committees, um, you know, to assess transactions. And I think another key question that consumers must ask is, you know, when certain clients have gone into default, because you know most lenders have had to deal with defaulting clients at some point in their careers, you know, wh what is their process for collecting on their debt? And I think that's very important. So the borrower needs to understand upfront that should there be a case of default, what procedures um, does the lender follow, you know, to recover their money? And I think that's also a key point. Gary, up to this point, we've spoken a bit about mitigating the risk, but what do you say to the consumer who quite unfortunately has gotten themselves into a borrowing relationship with an unlicensed or even a fraudulent um, credit provider? What can you do? Is there recourse? Yeah, the starting point is not to borrow more money. I mean, we've naturally, you know, in our business, uh, you know, come across people that you know, ask us for money because they're in financial difficulty currently, they're under debt review, whatever the case may be. And what they're doing is they're asking for additional funds. So, you know, and, and that's the first problem. You can't, if you're in a financial distress, if you're in financial distress and, you, and you're missing payments, you know, borrowing more money, you know, new and fresh money to settle old debt is not the way to go. So certainly if you're in, in a financial distress, you know, talk to the lender, uh, see how you get out of that predicament that you're in with that particular lender. Um, if you find that the lender hasn't behaved properly or according to the documentation, 
there are is a, an ombudsman that one can talk to, they can go under debt review, there are counsellors that one can speak to. So there certainly are channels that one can explore if you believe that the lender has not acted ethically. If, however, you, you don't have a problem with the lender, you just the person's in financial difficulty. You know, that always goes down to the relationship with the lender. I mean, we've come across situations, even when I was in the banking environment many years ago, and now, you know, I'm a non-bank lender, uh, I run a non-bank lending business myself. It's all about relationships with, between the lender and the borrower. So if you do come across difficulty, uh, if you're a borrower, most important is communicate with the lender, discuss it with them, and see how you can work through it together. But your bottom line is don't get into debt to service debt. 100% right. Don't take on more debts. And, and often when you're in a distressed situation, that's when these unscrupulous lenders come to the fore. They see you in a difficult situation. And what they'll do is they will, will lend you the money um, under the guise that they're helping you. But ultimately, that money that they're lending you is exceptionally expensive. So, I mean, I've come across lenders out there who are charging 5% per month. And let me repeat, it's 5% per month, not prime plus five or whatever the case may be, you know, uh, and that's before fees and charges, etc. So, you know, they're there to take advantage of difficult situations. And I think the key is not to take on additional expensive debt if you're already in financial difficulty. Gary Palmer, very helpful as always. Before you go, if one of our viewers wants to contact you via social networks, if they have a question or simply want to find out more about Paragon Lending Solutions, how can they do that? Well, we've got a website which is www.paragonlending.co.za and on there is all our phone numbers and our email addresses. Thank you so much for speaking to us today. Pleasure.